At Walmart, we really think that um, all uh, sustainability, global responsibility work really needs to deliver shared value. So not just value to the business, but also value to society, value to the planet. And so that's sort of the operating model that guides all of our work. Uh, most recently, uh, we wrapped up our work to double fleet fuel efficiency. We've got a fairly large fleet, and so the opportunity to double fuel efficiency is really, really important. Um, and that work not only pulled 650,000 million tons of greenhouse gas out of the atmosphere, uh, but it also saved us one billion dollars. And a billion is an awful lot of money, so there's a lot of, of business value and societal value there. We have been working on climate change for 10, 12 years when we shared way back in 2005 that we thought climate change was an urgent challenge. Uh, we absolutely think that uh, it has the potential to impact and disrupt our supply chain, impact the lives of our customers and our associates. We think this is a huge societal challenge and that we have an obligation to do our part to pull emissions out of the atmosphere uh, within our operations, but then also through our, our value chain. Uh, what excites me about it is that I think we've got a pathway there by looking at things not only like energy efficiency and renewables, but also tackling challenges like food waste, like product use, like sustainable agriculture, packaging. There are a lot of different avenues that are open to, for all sorts of companies, all sorts of actors, all sorts of customers. To, to respond to climate change and make a real difference. I think there are a lot of things that companies can do better on sustainability, but I wouldn't necessarily caveat it as a corporate challenge. I think one of the things that I have seen that we need to do more of is bring all sort of three sectors of society together to help solve some of these challenges. Uh, so civil society, who, who are the NGOs out there, the experts with that have boots on the ground, that have deep science, deep knowledge on the issues. How do we bring them uh, to the table for discussion? How do we also in turn bring government to the table to talk through the rules and the regulations and, and the laws that they have on the books that may need to be enforced better or, or just drafted a little bit differently? Um, and then also, of course, business in the private sector. So how can all three of us come together to tackle some of these, these big macro challenges? Um, in the past, what I've seen is businesses worked with civil society, businesses worked with government. Civil society and government have worked together, but very rarely do you see all three come together at once. I just can't imagine that 10 years from now, anyone in any function is not going to have to address some of these big social and environmental challenges that we're facing. I think if I was a brand manager of a, of a category of, at, at a company, I would be really concerned and wanting to understand where am I getting my raw materials from? How have they been sourced from an environmental standpoint, from a social standpoint? Do I have some confidence that two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now with climate change, that, that those materials are still going to be available to me at cost? In, in a way that's uh, acting responsibly to the, the local community. Similarly, if I'm working in Wall Street and I'm evaluating a, a potential loan or an investment in a, in a company or in a project, I want to understand what are the environmental and social implications of that work to make sure that it's an investment that pencils out a year from now, but also five years from now and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. I just, I can't imagine that an MBA or a future business leader uh, would not need a really sophisticated understanding of the tools and the challenges that are out there, or the challenges that are out there and then the tools that they can use to address them.